So today we have a problem because we don't have a perpetual B12 which is cultured within the, the own, your own body, the, the large intestine. And so we need an input of B12. Now, here's the other uh, interesting thing. One pathway of this study now, which has numbered about three years for me, and I concluded it and finished the paper yesterday, is that the people who consume the most animal fat, saturated fat, literally per capita with a 398, or no, it was uh, actually 399 as of yesterday, studies that I've looked at with the deficiency, and that's where we've come up with the 65%, that the heaviest meat eaters had the highest incidence of B12 deficiency and the highest amount of B12 deficiency. Here's my take on that, and here's my take on everyone having a B12 deficiency. We don't take a bacterial form of B12. Number one, the meat eater is consuming an animal that is enriched, obviously, with B12 because its teeth or beaks are on the ground all day long and absolutely filling their bodies up with B12. When you cook that or you put antibiotics in that or pesticides and fungicides and herbicides, the B12 is literally dead, but it doesn't mean that the skeletal print of the B12 is not still present. It gets into the body because the body assumes that that biochemistry is there, now stops producing or culturing or capturing or keeping B12. So that's why the heavy meat eaters, ironically the opposite of what we've been told, but now we have the numbers, have a higher incidence of B12 deficiency. I would assume that light animal food consumers have approximately the same as long-term vegans or vegetarians who haven't taken B12 deficiencies have. So the general populace suffers a B12 deficiency uh, because they're not taking it. Now, in the old days, uh, we used to always say, well, things like tempeh have B12, and in fact, they do have a fractional amount. And things like blue-green algae have B12, and in fact, that's true. But it doesn't transfer over and become utilized by the human body and cells. So we have to take something that's stronger. Now, ironically, when I came to this discovery, uh, to my dismay, I discovered that overwhelmingly, practically every single B12 on the market globally is a chemical form of B12 made in laboratories. So I went off and I had a company out in California make me a B12 supplement, which is LifeGive B12. I'm speaking a lot about this in Europe. I just got back four days ago, as, as many of you know, from a five-country European tour and I'm hoping uh, that throughout the continent of Europe that B12 is available. In Britain, it is available because the LifeGive products are in part available there and B12 is part of that. This is something you better all take very serious. Uh, if, if you don't take it serious, the consequence is memory loss, the consequence is neurological damage. In, in, in short, medically what it does is it affects all neuron activity of the human body brain neurons, body neurons, and you can have everything from symptomology of Parkinson's disease to Alzheimer's disease with it. Uh, a lot of people have extremities that feel tingly and weak. That's the initial stages of it. This is something that's very serious. In all of my uh, 38 years of work, I've never been more serious about getting out there and telling people about taking a supplement as I am on B12 supplementation and make sure you take the right form, the bacterial form. A little sub-study on this too is that as of uh, three or four weeks ago, I actually looked at 38 people who had taken injectable forms of B12. That seemed to be common. Uh, people who have low energy and of course the doctor who doesn't know very much often says, even the holistic type, uh, that you have anemia because you're not eating meat or you're not doing this or you're not doing that or you, you're too fat or God knows what story they have and injects B12 in. Well, how that acts is almost like an amphetamine in the body. It's a stimulant. So people like it because they feel good for a few days after it, and then they have to go back in for another injection periodically. Well, out of the 38 people who were consistently taking injections on an average of about a year and two, two months, uh, some for several years and some for, you know, six months, we found out that only 30, uh, that 32 of them had too little B12, so they were absent or lacking B12. That means out of that, only six of them were getting B12, and I'm not sure that that wasn't just by chance that they had it to begin with. 
So don't think taking injections of B12, the chemical form, is going to do you much good. Now let's move on to some other questions that were sent on the internet.